Tomorrow, Elon Musk's ex is back in court suing the Center for Countering Digital Hate, a nonprofit that's dedicated to fighting extremism online. Musk claims the center's data showing a spike in hate speech, harassment, violence, and misinformation on X has cost him millions in advertiser dollars. Since Musk's takeover of Twitter and controversial decisions on who is allowed on the site and who is not, advertisers have abandoned the platform in droves. Imran Ahmed, founder and CEO of the Center for Countering Digital Hate, says this lawsuit is meant to silence the truth and is straight out of, he says, the authoritarian playbook. He joins us this morning. Good morning, Imran. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Let's set the stage for this lawsuit. Elon Musk is suing your nonprofit, claiming your research, your data on the rise of hate speech on X has cost him millions. Talk to us about what your research determined and why you've called this a baseless lawsuit. Well, when, we took, when Elon Musk took over the platform, we took over Twitter, renaming it X, we did a study to look at the, how frequently hate terms were used on the platform in the month after he took over compared to the year before. And what we found was that there were radical rises in use of the most offensive term against African Americans. It went up 200 percent, so it tripled in, in number. Hate speech against Jewish people, against women, against LGBTQ plus people. And we published that research, essentially holding up a mirror to the platform that Elon Musk had, had created. Because, of course, when he took over that platform, he put up the bat signal. He told people, you can say whatever you want here. He let thousands of people who had previously been banned from Twitter for breaking the rules repeatedly back on the platform. And guess what? Haters gonna hate. So they came back on and they started spouting hate speech and we held up a mirror. And instead of doing what any reasonable executive would do when faced with that reflection and think, crumbs, I should change the way that we're behaving, he sued right. the mirror. Yeah. And um, X fired, actually, and gutted its regulatory rules and ethical standards when he did take over. Talk to us about the significance of these figures being allowed back on. You know, you have Alex Jones, Andrew Tate, and even Donald Trump back on the platform after being kicked off. Look, I think, of course, it's important that specific individuals, if they come back on and they're spouting hate or disinformation, that's bad. It toxifies our public discourse. But also it's about the rules, as you said. It's about the standards that he's setting. Now, when you join a platform, we all sign up to those community standards, right? And because we're responsible people, we abide by our responsibilities to, to, to follow the rules, not to be hateful, not to be mean and unpleasant to other people, to make it unpleasant for other people to speak out there. Because, of course, you know, freedom of speech for abusers means that you silence normal people or the people who might be victims of that abuse. But of course, with every responsibility comes a reciprocal right that we should expect the platform to enforce those rules. And it is the staggering failure of X to enforce the rules, not just on hate. We study eating disorder and self-harm content that affects our kids. We study a, a wide range of harms, including uh, you know, the most egregious grooming and and abuse against children. And just recently, when confronted with the fact that his platform had become a breeding ground for that kind of abuse of kids, he hired 100 people in Austin, Texas, when, of course, he gutted firing thousands of moderators before. It's just Imran, not yeah, I hear your point. And, of course, censorship is always controversial, particularly in these days where extreme and then connects with, you know, um, with the First Amendment, Elon Musk is actually using that argument, free speech, to justify all the changes to X and bringing back these banned accounts. Yet he suspended Alexei Navalny's widow, former L.A. Sheriff Alex Villanueva, and dozens of other journalists and celebrities. So the question is, as you face this lawsuit, how dangerous for one man to have that kind of outsized power? Well, I think it's very dangerous when we have one person who believes himself to be beyond scrutiny, who, when you research him and his platform, sues you to try to silence you. And of course, he's the world's richest man. We're a medium-sized non-profit that does immensely good work. Um, but nevertheless, we can't sustain, we can't uh, with, 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 withstand an assault from the world's richest man if he wants to destroy us. And so... It is dangerous without checks and balances because, of course, what you end up when you don't have a system with real checks and balances, you end up with mad and bad leaders 
of your biggest uh, industries, your biggest companies and your right. government. And of course, with China in charge of TikTok and Elon Musk in charge of X, we really do have the worst case scenario of both mad and bad leadership of some of the leading platforms that affect yeah. our, kids, our society every day. Yeah, and you're calling, you, know, you bring up China, you're calling this lawsuit straight out of the authoritarian playbook. You've hired Roberta Kaplan, who just won the $83 million E. Jean Carroll defamation case. Why'd you choose her? Well, because like me, she likes a scrap. And, you know, she's also willing to take on bullies. And I think it's really important that there are people who are willing to speak truth to power. When I met Robbie, Roberta, you know, it was clear to me I'd met a kindred spirit, and she had too. And I think that we're going to make a great team in explaining to the court exactly why this case holds no merit whatsoever. The right. claims made are utterly uh, ridiculous. Right. And it's important that they dismiss it at the first instance using California's excellent anti-slap statutes. I do want to ask you before I let you go, the SEC has just approved Trump's Truth Social $10 billion media merger with Digital World Acquisition Corp. And when it goes public, Trump will own half, more than half of the company or about 78 million shares. How does this complicate the social media landscape and your organization's mission to fight digital hate? And we have about 30 seconds. Well, of course, look, we don't want sewage farms pumping out hate and lies on, uh, on our Internet. The question isn't whether or not um, it should be allowed to happen. I think platforms should be allowed to exist. The question is whether or not it's a viable company. And the truth is that not many people are using that because not many people want to spend their, di their, their entire day submerged headfirst into sewage. Um, you know, if Elon Musk has tremendous power in this country, as you know. He's in space and EV, communications, war front uh, with all those sat satellites. And he's now up for a Nobel Peace Prize. Should he get it? I can think of better candidates. We'll leave it right there.